so we hear sounds around us we listen to music and we appreciate music separately from sound separately from noise but there are a few questions that i have first one being why do we have two ears wouldn't one ear just do you could hear probably well of course some of you might be answering we need two ears so that we can hear from both sides well that could be true or may not let's find out it's one of the answers or one of the questions hidden inside this chapter for you and the other one of course being what exactly is common between dolphins and bats they look pretty different right there couldn't be something that's so different looking than, than bats and 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 dolphins but what is it that connects them something in common between the two of them and what exactly is the sound we hear it we say that i can hear something would all animals agree with us if we told this is sound and this is not sound would a dog agree with us would a snake agree to our definition of sound so one more question and one of the last questions one of the many other questions in fact that are hidden inside this chapter are what exactly is this matchbox phone how does it work you have a matchbox you connect a little thread to it put another matchbox at the end somebody whispers at this end quite far away you take it pretty far away and still somebody puts their ear on the other end they're able to hear the sound which we know is not true if somebody whispers here without this right somebody whispers here and somebody tries to listen to it quite far away they can't hear it so what exactly does this match fo- matchbox a couple of matchboxes with a thread do such that sound can be heard so as you learn new things in this chapter you will begin to find that answering these questions and many many more are going to be that much more easy and let's find out how but in order to answer any of these questions we need to go back into probably one of the most fundamental ideas of physics in fact fundamental dichotomies of physics which is particles and waves there are certain ways in which you can look at the world as particles or you can look at the world as waves now let's let's imagine that you want to send a message to somebody right and you you could do it this way you could whisper it to somebody in somebody's ear you can tell it to someone and then they can run to the other person and tell them right and that way you've conveyed the message right but th- that's not the only way in which information can spread in this in this world because you can imagine if it's this way instead of the first case let's imagine now that there are a line of people between you and the other person continuously and now what you do is that you whisper whatever you want to say to the person next to you right and that person whispers it to the person next to him and that person whispers to the person next to him and so on and eventually what begins to happen is that the person you intended the message for gets the message in this case has information spread from you to that person yes it has has any particle in one sense of the word has any object actually physically gone from here to there it's not right so in the first case of course it did there was a person running from here to there but in the second case everybody just turned to the next person and whispered the information still went so if you were to imagine dropping a stone into a very clear lake right a calm lake that is completely still you drop a little, little stone there it begins to send off a circle and you would have surely seen this when that circle is going the question you'll begin to have is who really is going who are those little water people running around in a circle scared by your little stone who exactly are they is the are there really water particles going around in circles are they really moving to test this of course we can do something pretty interesting and right? if you were to take a little cork that floats or a little sponge ball or if you really mean you a little piece little ant i don't know if ants float you put them on a little leaf and put them you, know, you leave them there what can begin to happen is that you will notice that when the circle passes them when the circle of water the ring that you see passes them they do not move rightwards or left they do not move along the plane of water at all they just bounce up and come back down so you begin to realize that sometimes information or what appears to be spreading because even on a wheat field right if, if there's a windy day there's a field and you see that there's a wind blowing on that field you'll see little lines that are seem to be going on that field when you look at it from the top right you'll see that there are some, there's something going on but you know that the, every single piece of wheat every single plant is actually rooted to the ground which means it's not moving this way or that way but overall on top you see that something's moving across the field what exactly is this so the sense that we have right now is that things can move even without the actual particles moving physically from one place to another they can just do something very small where they are but we see it as if something is moving so in the case one where we showed you a person runs and gives the message that is called a particle where a particle transfers from one place to another second case where something apart from a particle transfers we call it a wave and we're going to now talk about certain types of waves because we've kind of already told you a little bit about water waves and about how waves move on a wheat field and things like that we're going to tell you how these two waves can be different 
The first thing, of course, is that there is no particles moving from one place to another, and that's when when information travels without that, it's a wave. Now let's begin to ask this question, right? Let's imagine now. Let's imagine that the particles are moving, where about their position, whichever the position is, they are moving about that, just kind of vibrating around it, up and down or sideways this way or some way like that. They're not really moving, but just vibrating about that point. Now, what are the two possibilities that we have? I might want my message to go from this point to this point, and everybody in this, in that whole uh, line of people that we imagined, could either maybe say sit down and stand up, right? And how would that look? If you were to imagine this now, right? Imagine a group of people standing in a line, right? And at the first count, the first person sits down, and they're all holding each other shoulder to shoulder, right? So in one sense, they're all connected. One person sitting is not independent of another person. So if he sits, he starts pulling the person next to him. So it's kind of like a bond. So there's a particle here, that human being. There's kind of a bond between him and the next through his shoulder. And he begins to sit down. The next person feels a force. He begins to sit down. And as he's sitting down, the person next to him feels a force. And it keeps going that way. What would you observe? Every single person here is actually just sitting up and down. He's never, ever, ever moving slightly towards the right or towards the left. But when you watch this happening, what will you see? You will see something that's going from one side to the other, something that looks like a wave, and what we call a wave, right? Because you would have played with this sometime else as well. Because if you were to take this and compare this with something you've played with very commonly, take a piece of string, do a little whip, you see something going across the string and coming back, right? It comes back sometimes when it hits the wall, but at least you'd see it going. In that case as well, all the particles of the string are just going. Up and down, exactly similar to what what you see over here, where people are just sitting up or going, sitting down or going up, and not anything else. But the wave as it is moves this way. So in this case, the wave motion is in one direction, and the motion of the particles that make up that wave is in the perpendicular direction. Just like in the thread case, right? You do a thread every, you do a whip to a thread, you whip a thread. Every particle goes up and down, but the wave as it is moves this way. So they are perpendicular. The particles move that way, the wave goes that way. And when that happens, we call it a transverse wave. It's just a name that we give whenever particles and the wave are perpendicular. Awesome. So, is there any other kind of wave? Let's try to find out. But take this and set it aside, and let's begin to think about what else could we do. Let's take the same people analogy. So, you take a group of people and you make them stand shoulder to shoulder. In this case, instead of in the first case, what do we do? We took the first guy, pressed him on his head, right? So it kind of sent off a wave throughout. In this case, what we will do is we'll hold this guy. Right, and instead of trying to push him down or up, we'll shove him towards the other people and then pull him back. Now, what's going to happen when you do that? So you're beginning to shove him towards the other guy. So the other guy, the second guy in this in this situation, begins to feel a force, and he pushes the next and pushes the next and so on. Yeah, that sends off something like a domino effect. It starts to push people. But the moment you're doing that, the moment it's going, in just some amount of time, you begin to pull the guy back, and because he's connected to the next person on his shoulder, he's going to pull back the next guy as well. So he begins to pull him, right? And now what happens? Every single person is pulled backwards as well. And what would this look like? Yeah, everybody over here is going a little bit away from their position, but coming back. Yeah, that's what they're doing. They're not moving too too far away from where they are, but the wave as it is is moving. And in this case, the particles are moving parallelly to the direction of motion of the wave. In the previous case, it was perpendicular. Here it is parallel. And exactly, would you have seen this in a very common way? You would have seen this very often if you've ever played with a slinky. Or that little spring toy that you play with. So you take that, and if you were to push a little bit on one side and pull it back, you would see a little kind of a wave that goes around and comes back. Sometimes it comes back and it reflects on the other surface, or at least you would see it going that way. Now, what exactly is going that way? You've succeeded in compressing the spring a little bit and then elongating it. That little compression compresses the next part, then the next part, then the next part, and each compre the compression travels along that slinky, and then. As that compression travels, there is also what we call a lack of, you know, you compress it, you can also elongate it. There is an elongated part that follows it, right? So instead of the spring being uniform as it would be if you just leave it, you compress it, some part of it, and elongate some part of it, and then that begins to travel. So in this case, what you observe is that the particles travel in a particular direction that is parallel to the direction of motion of the wave itself. Whew. So two cases here. First one was called transverse; it still is. The second one, what we call longitudinal. So when the wave and the particle move parallel to each other, we call it longitudinal waves. And when the particles move perpendicular to the wave, we call it a transverse wave. 
Interesting. So these are just names we give to differentiate between these two because they are fundamentally different in many aspects. They are very, very different in the way they behave and that's one of the reasons why we do this. Even though they have a lot of similarities which we are going to see in some time. So now let's let's see if uh, we've kind of understood this concept in a nice manner. How many of you watch sports here? So if you do, almost surely you will know about this phenomenon called the Mexican wave. Right? There's a huge stadium of people and it begins from one side and it spreads across the entire stadium. It's a beauty to watch. What kind of is it a wave first of all? It's called the Mexican wave. Yeah? It's probably is a wave. There's no particle moving but you see something moving. So from your understanding what do you think it is is it a transverse wave or is it a longitudinal wave that's right yeah each of the people over there each person over there is actually just standing up and sitting down he might if he's really enthusiastic he might do something with his hands but all he needs to do is stand up and sit down right but as people start doing it in order what do you begin to observe is that a wave that's tra- transverse uh, that is traversing the entire stadium yeah each person of course just sits up and down it is a transverse wave now that we've done what it is that's required for you to understand what these particles and these waves are these concepts are extremely crucial to understand all the physics because everything that you learn about will probably fall into one of these two boxes or we will try to fit it within one of these two boxes we will but before you believe in the certainty of this all let's add one little bonus to this for the extremely keen ones because you're going to begin to question this in a few years and that is is everything in the world either a wave or a particle well it turns out first of all that we have one more third kind of wave we have transverse waves we have longitudinal waves and we have one more third kind of wave which we're going to talk about yeah but before we do that there's one little classification called mechanical waves and non mechanical waves at mechanical waves are those that require something like we saw here every single thing we saw till now are mechanical waves people pushing mexican waves little springs little threads because everywhere there is something mechanical something that's a particle that's actually moving up and down or sideways but we don't need that an example for this is light you could take it in vacuum and light would just travel and the question was what exactly is light moving up and down what is exactly moving up and down when light is moving and the answer really is nothing and lots of people couldn't accept that the answer was nothing they just couldn't do that they believed in something called the ether that exists all over the universe which was moving when light was moving but it turns out that we don't really need an ether to, for light to move we don't need to imagine an ether for light to move so for the really keen ones there are all the waves are kind of classified into mechanical and non mechanical waves mechanical waves that require a medium to propagate and non mechanical waves that don't require one and on top of this we have what's called what are called matter waves which you will learn about in some time quite some time which are pretty interesting because it's one way of looking where every particle can be kind of seen as a wave with a particular wave then so it all this is me trying to tell you that whenever human beings try to fit in nature within the boxes that we create nature inherently gets becomes arrogant and shows us that we can never do that it kind of always steps out of those two boxes we create and say there are particles that behave both wave both as waves and particles neither is wave nor particles things like that which begins to really tell us that our categorical way of separating this world may not really work well at at certain points where there is a break where things begin to start having a smooth flow between one to the other because in the previous chapter we saw that solids and liquids have a nice smooth transition between them there are objects that behave both like solids and a little bit like liquids powdery substances so similarly even when it comes to matter and waves the particles and waves there are things that behave like particles like waves in other words they don't obey our categories in fact another interesting example for a wave is that if you've gone to an amusement park and there are these things called wave pools there right and you go stand in one of them especially in the deep parts not in the shallow parts because it doesn't really work that well in the shallow parts in the deep part if you're standing and if the wave is generated you will notice that every single person standing there little heads will all bob up and come back down and then the wave passes them if you've noticed this you'll realize that what kind of wave was generated a transverse wave of water where every water molecule was pushed up and down so with that along with that even the people went up and down but the wave as it is propagated horizontally so very real life example of what we notice as waves now the thing about waves is that when a wave propagates every particle in that wave is only influenced by that person or that particle right next to it it doesn't really care too much about the history of how this was created not directly of course the person who's starting is indirectly influencing this particle right but as far as this particle knows all it knows is that the person next to me is pulling me down or pulling me up or whatever so i go down 
and by doing that i also pull the next person up or down or whatever so it's really a very local thing where each particle interacts with the next one and so on and so on it's transferred throughout so in a way each particle kind of cares only about who's right next to it and in one sense influences who's right after it 